a good clip for you guys here. You good, Peter? All right. Albert Einstein once said that the most important decision you'll ever make is to decide once and for all whether you live in a universe that is supportive, that supports you and is friendly, or whether you live in a universe that is hostile and is non-supportive. So we got a program. What was the program? It said, you don't heal yourself, the doctor heals you. A negative belief can hurt you if not kill you as much as a positive belief can heal you. How often do you hear you have to take a pill for virtually any ailment that might be concerning you and that if you don't have one, they'll invent one, you know. Uh, and, and create new ailments. Right, right <laughs> exactly. Your body has these reserve cells and the understanding of these reserve cells is that they will repair or replace anything that your intention is focused on. I can change my behavior, and there's a lot of things that I can change in my life, but the thing that I can't change is my DNA. I can't, I can't, I can't change my genetics. I, that, I can't help the way I am. It's just what I inherited. And I, thought there, I sat there and thought, that's what so many people think. And it's a major disconnect because we've been all programmed with a belief uh, that we are sort of victims of our heredity, mm. that we didn't pick the genes that we came with, we can't change the genes that we come with, and then hook that with the belief that the genes control who we are, and then all of a sudden you realize, well, I'm a victim. I can't mm -hmm. get out of my own heredity. And it's an unfortunate situation because what we now know in this new field is called, uh, 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 is, the great name is called epigenetic control. So what you say, epigenetic control, what you're saying is control above the genes. And this is where it comes into the simple reality that the environment and our perception of the environment actually can rewrite uh, our genetic code. It doesn't change the DNA. It changes the readout of the DNA. Uh, a DNA uh, are the genes, and genes are blueprints. You can create over 30,000 different variations from the same blueprint, the same gene. And all of a sudden it says, then you're not limited by your genes. You're limited, if anything, by your perception. And your, and your belief about the world that you live in because that's the information that's going in and affecting the genes. That it has now been established that a minimum of one third and more likely two thirds of all medical healing, which includes surgery and drugs and everything else, is all accomplished through what is called the placebo effect. And that basically says that it's the mind of the patient and their belief system that ultimately determines whether the drugs or the surgery are going to manifest any difference. Basically, uh, arthroscopic surgery, and I, I forgot, I think they do about 180,000 of these operations a year. Uh, a doctor at Houston wanted to do a study. He said he really wanted to find out, was it the rinsing out of the fluid or the scraping of the knee that really provided the major healing process? So he was going to do this as a research study, and, and the woman who was helping him said, but you must include a placebo group. And he, he, fabricated a placebo operation. What he would do is he'd make the two incisions. Uh, the patient, of course, couldn't see their knee. There was a draping over it. And what he would do is put on, a, on the video screen uh, a surgery that he had done earlier in videotape from somebody else. And so what he would do is the patient would get the incisions, they'd watch the surgery, and he would talk through the surgery, like, you know, overdubbing, saying, oh yeah, everything's going great, Mr. X, and, and Mr. X is watching the screen and all that, so that was the placebo surgery. Didn't do anything, made two incisions, sewed it back up, they looked at the results, and the results were every process was equally the same. Whether they rinsed it out, whether they scraped it and rinsed it out, or whether they just did the incisions and nothing at all. He had to own, and it was like really difficult, he had to say that all I'm doing is creating a very elaborate and very expensive placebo. And, and it, the mind did the healing. There's something called the nocebo effect. And the nocebo effect 
is essentially the same as a placebo effect, but it's based on something different. It says a negative belief can hurt you if not kill you as much as a positive belief can heal you. And so the real serious issue is, is that it's really the power of belief. Positive or negative are equally powerful, but go in opposite directions. Right. The function of the mind is to create coherence between your beliefs and the reality that you experience. So if you have a, a belief in your mind that you can't do something or that you are you know, uh, susceptible to something, and that's your belief, mm. then the mind's function is to create coherence so that you will manifest that belief to be true. So uh, it's very interesting because uh, Henry Ford, he would say, uh, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. When a patient hears that they cannot heal themselves, when there's something that's terminal, or any of these other issues, that perception alone can stop the entire healing process right there. You know, my friend Deepak Chopra, do you know Deepak? Yes. Uh, you know, talked about one of his best friends, uh, um, he died, uh, he had a black mark on his lung. And uh, he, when he found out that he had this black mark on his lung, it meant lung cancer and he was devastated. And within three weeks he was dead. When they were cleaning out his office, they found x-rays that had been taken of him 20 years before. Same black mark was on the lung, the exact same. It had been there for 20 years, but it wasn't until he found out and thought that this was a brand new thing, and then the mind began to take over. And when they're ready, this is the fun part. There's something called spontaneous remission. And what is a spontaneous remission? Well, these are people, let's say, with terminal illnesses and uh, everybody counts them out. And then for some particular reason, which I'll get into in a second, something happens and all of a sudden they get up out of that deathbed and they're, and they're no longer sick. And you wanna say, well, what is the one common underlying feature that connects all spontaneous remission? You know what makes their, their health come back? is because they let go of all of the things that actually gave them the disease, their belief issues, because they let it go because they said, well, I don't have time to think about this. I'm just gonna go out and enjoy my life. In that enjoyment of life and letting go of the belief, they change their perceptions. And the beautiful part about it is, as fast as you change your perception, is as fast as you reprogram the cells. The cells are programmable and instantaneous. Check, check, check. Warrior up tonight because it might be a little bit loud on the side over here. <clears throat> well, I suppose if your doctor keeps telling you oh, your cholesterol is high, you're going to die because of your cholesterol. So two points above what it should be. If it keeps pounding that in your head and put that negative belief in your head, who knows? Maybe you will die because your cholesterol is two points high. You have put that little seed in your head. Kind of interesting, makes you really think about all the people that have had arthroscopic knee surgery. For you, those for those of you who aren't familiar with that, they go on your knee there, stick two uh, holes in there, going through with the camera and some other devices, and kind of scrape around and mess around in there with your knee with the meniscus and cartilage and all that fun stuff. He was showing that everyone going through this, <laughs> scraping it or not scraping it, it was the same thing. I'll tell you what, a lot of those patients we get in the office, they come back with some nasty knee infections too. You don't want those hospital-induced infections. They're not fun to play with there, and I'll get into that a little bit later on here this evening. <clears throat> that was Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's got a great book called The Biology of Belief. If you want more on that, that's right there. Dr. Sun's got an August lecture here, Cancer Prevention and Nutrition. I decided to change my lecture around a little bit. I was going to do some herbal stuff. I'm going to save that for um, later on and uh, talk about superfoods. I think I've got a pretty cool lecture line up here for some September talking about superfoods. <coughs> For those of you who do not know yet, we've got a new website, diversehealthservices.com. You could do online ordering now. Uh, 
there's a whole bunch of other little things that we keep adding on there right now, little bit by little, and uh, check it out. <clears throat> if you want to hop on the email newsletter now, instead of emailing uh, that Yahoo account, just go to diversehealthservices.com and under the contact us form, or I think there's a contact us form or newsletter form, just click that and it automatically subscribes you right on there. And it's sent out once a month there, first week of each month. We are on Facebook also, you can follow us along through there. We've got some new products here. For those of you who are very concerned about your blood pressure, Dr. Tent and I don't get overly concerned, but if you want some other resort versus magnesium, vitamin D, the L-arginine and some other things that we use for the blood pressure and if you're not responsive and whatnot, <clears throat> this is your last resort before medication right here. We stole this from Dr. Brownsting, New Spalmaning. This is what they're using at their office here. It's Cardiotone and Trifol right there. One, three times a day, each of those. We got that in the office. We are having some patients experiment with that. The last month, we we're kind of impressed with their results. So we decided to shelve it and stock it there. Skype, I've introduced a new idea to Dr. Tent, and I believe we'd probably be the first chiropractors doing this here. We, I get asked this all the time, who does what you guys do in this state? Who does this over there? And you know, we've got some networking people, which I refer to once in a while. <clears throat> Nutritionally, we might be able to see some of your relatives online over Skype. Be something kind of cool, look for that in the future. Be kind of interesting to see how well that goes there. Summer is around the corner. We get asked us all the time, what do you guys do for suntan lotion? What do you, we don't do suntan lotion. We don't do. Six Cataflex F pearls in coconut oil topically. <clears throat> this is a flax-based oil. And this is a saturated fatty oil. I want to explain this because not too many people understand why this exactly works. You are playing with calcium metabolism in your body. Take the sun, take your skin, take your bloodstream right here. That's your blood right there. When the sun hits your skin, you got calcium that's in all your extracellular tissues here. <clears throat> you start producing vitamin D. Vitamin D starts circulating around all in your blood system here. But you need calcium to metabolize that vitamin D. So calcium starts draining from your extracellular tissue through here, binds with that vitamin D so you can metabolize it. The problem is when you start draining too much calcium from your tissue, you leave your skin here being prone to being sunburned. The Cataplex F pearls takes calcium from the blood and pushes it in the opposite direction. The more calcium you could keep in your tissue, the le least likely you're going to be fried by the sun there. That's how that works. <clears throat> now, if you did overdo it in the sun and you feel fried at night, and you're feeling hot, warm, feverish, you got too much vitamin D in your blood system, taking calcium then kind of helps put that fever out because that extra calcium in that bloodstream helps you metabolize the rest of that vitamin D that's circulating around in you there. That's how that works. For those of you who are pale, need a little extra help because that still doesn't work, we're going to recommend something a little natural like Ricola Natural Suntan Lotion. Burt's Bees has one. There's a few different ones. We don't carry this at the office, but for those of you who need to build a little bit of a base before using those oils, this is better than the commercial suntan stuff here. Why is commercial suntan lotion bad? <clears throat> well, it's a free radical generator, strong estrogenetic activity there. These chemicals, synthetic chemicals that are alien to the human body and accumulate in the fatty um, tissues of your body there. <clears throat> We're all going to get hammered, not all of us, but a lot of other individuals who are above the learning curve are going to get hammered with the estrogen this year. The DDT that's in the off insect spray just everywhere and this, you're inhaling that, you're it's absorbing that right through your skin right there. Other bug sprays, people spraying their houses down for bugs, they're going to absorb that stuff there. 
your weed killers, chemical sunscreens, that all falls right in there. Chemical sunscreens, nothing but topical estrogen you're putting right on your skin. The bisphenol A, the plastic people, you know, people going to Sam's Club, buying those bulk waters, throwing them in, the, in their trunk, letting the heat hit that trunk. And, oh man, you throw, you put a water bottle in your car <clears throat> when it's 90 degrees in that car and you drink out of that water bottle, you could taste all that plastic in there. Imagine how much stuff you're getting and all that leaching from that bisphenol A in there that you're getting there. You don't want that in your system. We preach very heavily about cleaning, keeping your pathway detox ways open there. <clears throat> Nitro greens and cruciferous complete. These are all your leafy green vegetables that Dr. Tent and I really don't eat, so I'm going to use a pill form of that or a supplement form. That's what keeps your P-450 cytochrome pathway open. We get patients in office. My dad had Parkins. What do I have to do to not have what he's got? Because it's devastating. Keep your pathways open. You want to. We live in a sea of estrogen, a sea of chemicals. If your pathways aren't open, this is what's going to accumulate in your liver. This is what's going to make you shake here. I'll tell you the two people who are going to have their pathways close up the fastest. All these people on antacids and antihistamines. Allergies are a big problem right now. Everyone's on Claritin, everyone's on Zyrtec, everyone's on Tagamin for the stomach. Nexium, Prilosec, Protonix, all this stuff blocks up that liver so much, they are the most featherweights when it comes to drinking. You could have a Tagamin on Monday, have two drinks on Friday, and be completely put under the table because that liver's so backed up with those two medications that that alcohol just right through you, right in your bloodstream. This is why we say keep those pathways open. We had little kids with asthma on Zyrtec, 13 years old. Mom spraying down the house. He's all blocked up with that Zyrtec. Mom's wondering why the kid's shaking. It's like, well, that's the pesticides. You know, when you kill bugs in a house and you kill the center of the bugs and the, the bugs on the side that got some of the chemical exposure from the bug killer but didn't get all of it, they're kind of shaking before they die. <laughs> that's pretty much what your son's doing right there. These are some of the effects from this exogenous estrogen in women, endometriosis, severe PMS, increased breast and uterine cancers, fibrocystic breasts, uterine cysts, migraines, erratic periods. Estrogen is going to, this exogenous estrogen is going to attack the breasts in women and attack the prostate in men. I'm going to go over some blood results of lowering some PSAs in guys just playing those two simple things, the nitro greens and the cruciferous vegetables, just clearing these pesticides out. In guys, lowered sperm counts, sexual identity confusion, feminization, breast enlargement, smaller tool kits, more testicular, <laughs> testicular cancer, <laughs> undescended <laughs> testicles. <laughs> this doesn't happen around here, does it? <laughs> yes. This is kind of interesting. This is the American Journal of Public Health. Do chemical sunscreens increase cancer? Worldwide, the greatest rise in melanoma has been experienced in countries where chemical sunscreens have been heavily promoted. The rise in melanoma have been exceptionally higher in Queensland, Australia, where these, the medical establishment has vigorously promoted the use of sunscreens. Queensland now has a more incidence of melanoma per capita than any other place on Earth. Kind of something to think about, you know. <clears throat> A lot of those reactions, you're putting this stuff on your skin, these are alien to your body, these are chemicals. <clears throat> All the older folks, uh, you may see this is a squamous cell carcinoma right here. These folks get that. Doctor, my dermatologist said, I'm not, I can't go in the sun anymore. Hibernate indoors, can't go in the sun anymore, I'm done. <clears throat> This is a lack of essential fatty acids and vitamin D. Those two things, essential fatty acids and vitamin D. Someone who's had this type of cancer removed, avocado oil actually helps accelerate the healing of that. So keep that in mind for some of those older folks that you may know that have had this type of issue. But this is a lack of oil and vitamin D. Put someone on Lipitor, some type of stat, and suck the good fats out of them, stick them out in the sun, they will fry like they've never fried before. 
benefits of avocado oil for the skin. People with blemished skin due to aging or damages caused by UV rays can also benefit from avocado oil. Sterilins presented in this particular oil lesion blemishes while relieving damaged skin. This is what we would call a superfood. I'm giving you a little preview of some of the superfood stuff to come with, but works great. Has a lot of uh, natural vitamin E to it, and it's quite useful in assistance in naturally enhancing the production of collagen, which is the protein that's in the skin. Superfood. This is a term sometimes used to describe food with high phytonutrient content that may confer health benefits as a result. For example, blueberries often are considered a superfood because they contain significant amounts of antioxidants. That stuff there, vitamin C, manganese, and dietary fiber. Coconut oil. <clears throat> I love this stuff. I'm going to promote this very heavily. You know, we always get these kids and people off milk and ice cream. Why do we want them off milk and ice cream? They're hacking. They have this cough. Their ears are always plugged. Milk and ice cream feed bacterial infections. My whole life was nothing but strep throat and earaches. Ice cream fed that like crazy. Well, where are you going to get your calcium if you don't drink your milk? You notice that's the only selling point to milk? <clears throat> I've ditched that stuff there. Almond milk, rice milk, and non-genetically modified soy milk, which I'm still sketchy about. I don't trust soy or Silk's brand of that anymore. I throw them under the bus. Monsanto's got too many of his hands on these, or these farmers trying to sell soy, so I'm very sketchy about that. But coconut milk is absolutely what I'm going to preach here. And this is why. Coconut milk contains 50% lauric acid. When lauric acid presents in the body, it's converted into monolaurin. Monolaurin has all these antimicrobial properties to it, antiviral, antiparasites, uh, antifungal, all of this stuff. And you can get this information through westernprice.org here. But this stuff's a cool hidden little secret here. Monolaurin uses bacterial infections, yeast infections, parasitic infections, fungal, viral. Compound monolaurin is effective in treatment for candida, fungal infections like ringworm and athlete's foot. Monolaurin also specifically targets bacterial infections as well as lipid coated viruses like herpes, measles, influenza, uh, uh, hepatitis C and HIV. This is why the people that have the fungal yeast issues on their skin, we tell them to lather themselves in that coconut oil, get on the sun, roast this stuff out of your skin. This stuff works great, has many uses, should be on everyone's shelf here, not only just for sun tanning, being out in the sun. Not necessarily, I'm glad you asked that because I'm going to get into the pH a little bit later on because no one understands this pH and I'm going to kind of lay it out to everyone here later on. Great question though. <clears throat> you could buy this kind of stuff and they got pellet forms of this, a mile Lauren, but hey, you know, we're just going to say use the regular extra version coconut oil there and have at it there topically, internally. I love this stuff in the coconut milk. Uh, warts, we're going to use more colloidal silver and the citrus cetal liquid topically on that there. Back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> but absolutely, you could give that a shot on there. You know, there's some things with some of these skin things, you know, it's a little bit of a trial and error and see what works best for patients. Especially when people got this itchy issue on their skin. Oils feed your skin. You got to take them internally and sometimes even topically using the coconut oil there. These are why the Mediterranean have beautiful brown skin. They play the right oils. And your medical doctors will scare you of coconut oil because they say it's very saturated. It's going to make your cholesterol go up. No, it's not. We're going to get into that here. Another question? HCG. <clears throat> this is the uh, HCG diet that we've been promoting at the office here. Women have been loving this here. <clears throat> You start off this day by doing a three-day gorge. Eat everything and anything in sight for three straight days, and then you jump right into a 500-calorie day of diet using these liquid drops. There's only one problem. It's been working so good right now. Patients have been loving it. The FDA is all over the stuff like wildfire, so 
<clears throat> the last five bottles that we had on our shelf yesterday are off the shelf and they're gone, but we've got something complimentary to that through a company called Zorex, and I'll show you right here in a second. But this helps people metabolize fat and resets your metabolism in your brain. For those of you who are wanting to lose some extra pounds before summer comes fully running around the corner, this is something kind of cool. There's a 20-day program and there's a 40-day program here. You said the FDA is getting involved. Are they taking it off the market already? The homeopathic literature does not support the HCG because liquid drops, because this is based on Dr. Simeon's original diet when they would give you the injections. <clears throat> you know, you're taking the HCG injection shots every single day in 500 calorie days of diet. And they're saying the liquid form, the homeopathic version, they don't support it because they're saying you're losing more muscle mass than body fat percentage. I gotta say, I kinda gotta disagree. The results we're getting with the, in the office with this, patient's been feeling great and everything. And it's, it's unfortunate, but this is what that looked like here. <laughs> the pill form of that is Zorex CGF. We've had some patients already experiment with that there. You know, they're still getting the same great results. That one's more, that's backed up by our biotics research guys here. And like I said, this was based off of the old injections by Dr. Uh, Simeon's there in a 500 calorie day of diet. If you could imagine 500 calories, that's not that much food for one day. But there's patients, you know, he's resetting your metabolism there where they're like, that 500 calories is like almost too much. So it's kind of cool, but you know, it's something you gotta mentally prepare for if you're gonna jump into something like that. Is that a uh, female thing, or is that a male no, thing? No, guys and work? girls, I absolutely could do that. It doesn't matter because, that, is that female? It's a female hormone, but it helps you promote weight loss there in the breakdown of fatty tissue there. Will that mess up anything? Nope, not, not at all, anything? not at all. We would not promote that. Okay. <laughs> the guys, we, the guys need a lot of help today. We're not going to be promoting any more of that. So everyone thought this map was a joke here when this all happened. Japan and all this coming out. All they said, this is nothing but a hoax. None of this is going to come through here. Japan, this and that. Our iodine absolutely flew off the roof when this thing happened here. And the Americans that were over here, had everyone, all their people backed up a lot further than what the Japanese were telling their people. They, <laughs> with all the Osama bin Laden, bin Laden thing going on right now, no one knows what's going on. We don't even know if this thing's still contained. This has well, been. I would believe it there. You know, they said this is right on the same lines of Chernobyl here, if not worse here. But radioactive iodine will not bind in your body you are saturated with regular iodine. The people who are lacking iodine are the ones who get this in their body here. You cannot affect one side of the world without affecting the other side here. This was just last month here. Tokyo, Japan's government called for evacuation money from several towns beyond the damage. Danger zones already declared under the Fukushima nuclear power plant, warning that residents could receive high doses of radiation or the coming months. I just had a guy today, I just an old ex Ohio State football player, he just came back from Japan. He said it's an absolute mess there right now. He's like, everyone's scared to eat everything. You know, you know, all their farmer markets, all that stuff's from the ocean and this and that, and locally grown, they're like, it's an absolute mess. They're all scared to eat stuff over there right now. <clears throat> this is pretty cool. This is that guy right there, if you don't mind me pointing you out. This is an iodine patch test. How can you tell if you're saturated in good iodine? Well, here's the cheap way to find out. Do a little local patch of iodine on you. This was only a four hour span. Normally, this, they tell you to do this for 12 hours here. We got this at the office if you want us to put a little patch on you. If your body's deficient on iodine, it will suck it up through your skin and that little patch there will fade just like that from there. Kind of interesting, huh? The more scientific way of doing it is doing a urine catch. When you're taking iodine pills, what you don't use spills over to your urine. So if you keep loading yourself up with iodine and wait till it spills over into your urine, you can kind of titrate that over a little bit to see where your true dose is there. Does it take a while for it to accumulate in your system before it starts to overload? 
Yes. Is there a typical time frame? A couple weeks, a month? It depends. We're going to, you know, women are our best indicator symptomatically wise like this. The thyroid, the breasts, and the ovaries use the most iodine in the body. That's why women have the more, more of the issues with the hypothyroidism and this lack of iodine. The lumpy, bumpy, cystic breasts, cystic ovaries, we shrink them all the time with just doing simple iodine protocols. <clears throat> Too many people are turning off their thyroids using the fluoride, chlorine, and bromide things, and caffeine also pushes iodine out of your system. <clears throat> you can use iodorol. We use that one a day. Saturate your body. Nice little boost of iodine. See, iodine feeds the thyroid. Iodide feeds the body. Nice little boost of energy. And what you don't use, you'll pee right out with that there. Some patients will play a little bit higher, and I'll go over some simple blood work there, showing you some kind of cool results with just simple iodine there. Dr. Brownstein has got a book, Iodine, Why You Need It. He's like the iodine godfather around here. You want to know why? <clears throat> He's the one, you know, got us going on with the iodorol, you know, talking about his results with it. <clears throat> you want to see some strong iodine therapy? He uses such high, high doses of iodine, he'll push bromine through your skin and make it turn yellow if you're loaded with bromine. I've seen pictures from his lectures of patients, he turning yellow and brown from pushing that stuff out of their body. This is an interesting map. This is the goiter belt. <clears throat> Everyone in this little zone here, there's no iodine in the soil and the water. This is why hypothyroidism runs high in this kind of zone right here. So we're already behind the eight ball when it comes to iodine. The medical world has known about the goiter belt for over 50 years and they've attributed to low iodine content in the soil, lack of iodine in the diet causes low thyroid and goiter. That's goiter is where the thyroid swells up there. Had a lady two weeks came in that, she had a goiter, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't wait to do a patch test. I'd, you'd be lucky if this lasts two hours on you. Put it right on her. She's like, yeah, she's like, you pretty much nailed about two hours the whole thing, it was just gone. But you gotta watch out playing with iodine, you know, some people get the heart palpitations and some of those issues there. If that occurs, selenium helps you metabolize that iodine better. Supplementing with some selenium helps you metabolize that iodine in your body a little bit better. Case study, 27 year old female, <clears throat> this was back in February, diagnosed with Crohn's, started with the blood in the stool going four to five times a day, mostly all loose stools, meds help but still having flare ups, duration since October 2006, gets a flu shot yearly, strike one, started after birth of baby. All right, so I had to do some investigation. I'm like, so what happened? You know, how was the birth? This and that. She's like, eh, it wasn't as good. You know, I lost a lot of blood and blah, blah, blah. And had blood transfusion. So you had what? A blood transfusion. I'm like, did this all start from then? She's like, actually it did. You get sick through your nose and your mouth. You don't want things injecting your blood system. You don't want other people's blood. It turns on little autoimmune triggers, and that's what it turned on in her. It turned on Crohn's in her. Absolute mess. <clears throat> I feel sad for these patients that my heart goes out to them. She's only going four to five times a day. We got patients going 15 to 20 times a day trying to get this thing under control. They got to live their life around knowing where the next bathroom is. I put her on, I skipped over that. Citrus seed of liquid, it's a grapefruit seed extract there. ADP is a regnal oil, I put some germ back in her gut, that prebiotic and probiotic all in one. Cataplex AC to knock out some bacteria. If I'm gonna go to the desert island and take one thing, it's gonna be that citrus seed of liquid. There's not too much I can't kill with that there. When things get stuck in your blood and we're working against Uphill on some of those battles, that grapefruit seed extract kills a lot of good stuff there. <clears throat> month or two later, stool's more formed and no blood in it. Still going four or five times a day. She's been doing a lot better and able to wing off some of these medications. It's a dead end road when it comes to Crohn's. Steroids, antibiotics, steroids, antibiotics, scopia a million times, cut out sections in your bowels. 
and they'll start putting you on chemotherapy drugs and suppress your immune system. I got a buddy I graduated with, they've got his immune system so suppressed from these Crohn's medications, his wrists are swelling up from something else attacking his wrists. It's an absolute mess. It's all food. It's all food based. It kills. It's like many. It's like garlic. Garlic kills the bad bacteria and leaves the good bacteria alone. I like garlic because people that go in between bacterial and fungal or bacterial and yeast issues, they're on antibiotics. They're on antifungals. Back and forth. Garlic whew, smokes them both. There. I'm going to go over some of that here real quick. But it's just it's food based stuff. You know your body recognizes it. There. It's not foreign to the body. This was a 37-year-old teacher. <clears throat> this was a hospital-induced infection here. She had a C-section, diagnosed with MRSA four times in the past six months, started with boils in her groin and in her female area. Husband had it. She spread it to her husband, and he was hospitalized. Has been having all these flare-ups. This all started after a C-section. She's a teacher. She's like, I'm giving this to my husband. I'm worried about my kid. I can't teach children at school. She's like, I'm not responding to any of the medications. She's like, completely frustrated. First thing, no milk, no ice cream. No milk, no ice cream. Stop feeding it. <clears throat> Citrus seed tablets, grapefruit seed extract, ADP, oregano oil, Dimex, staph infection, Medi herb garlic, colloidal silver topically if those things break open. I absolutely smoked the MRSA out of her. One visit there. One month later, zero flare-ups with her MRSA. Kind of cool getting results like this when they've been from doctor to doctor playing all these different medications and they're not responsive to anything. All right, let's get into some of this blood stuff. <clears throat> First thing I want to talk about, eating right for your blood type. This is a fad thing. Let's break this down. This is an example of a fad diet. Eat foods based on your blood type, thinking that eating certain foods, the body will process them more efficiently because they are for your blood type. Processing foods more or less efficiently does not result in weight loss. Again, it eliminates foods, therefore one could, would be missing important nutrients. Cows have over 300 different blood types. They all eat the same thing, grass. <laughs> Do you all think they have different diets? No, they don't. They all eat the same stuff. <clears throat> what do we tell patients all the time in the office? Eat what your ancestors ate. National Geographic did a study in these blue zones. Blue zones were where there were centratarians, people who lived over 100 years old and whatnot. Surprisingly, there's no doctors there. <clears throat> Number two, they ate what their ancestors ate. Simple as that. Pick an Albanian. Make them eat Eskimo food, switch those guys back and forth. You'll destroy someone's digestive tract real quick. Got a lot of foreign patients in our office. They cannot eat American food. They're just like, my stomach is completely torn. Wait till they get their first gallbladder attack. Those are absolutely fun. We've been having a ton of those in this office here lately. Rancid oils will absolutely stir up your gallbladder. <clears throat> Do an ultrasound. Tell you that your gallbladder is only working. 12%, then tell you all you need to get surgery on that. Then when you're in surgery, take out your appendix while you're under. And the surgeon will come up to you afterwards and be like, well, your appendix didn't look right to me, so I decided to take it out while you're out there, acting like they did you the favor. <clears throat> I've seen that firsthand. All right, let's get this pH stuff. Alkalize or die. Alkalize to live. We eat too much of an acidic diet. We need to alkalize ourselves. No, you don't. You're absolutely wrong. This is a medical physiology book. Okay, and this is what all doctors go by here. These are all the different pHs of the body here. Your blood 7.4. Your urine's 5.5 to 6.5. Saliva is pretty neutral there. Central. Uh, the CSF there is 7.3, pancreatic fluids. Your stomach, you know, should be under 2.0. Very acidic there, probably the most acidic part of your body there. <clears throat> All these kids and people having allergies right now, what are we telling them? Cut the citrus out. Get rid of the citrus. Citrus, although it's acidic, causes you to have an alkaline reaction, <clears throat> and you will react with the environment and have those allergies. We use Bragg's apple cider vinegar, 
the pill form of that, the acidifying pill, calamyl, to push the pH the other way so they don't react with that. What's the definition of an allergen? An allergen is an undigested protein. What do you need to digest protein? Acid. Acid breaks down protein. You got many different buffers in your body. Your kidneys and your lungs help balance your pH. If your blood was too acidic, you're going to pull calcium from your bones to buffer that acidity. If you're chronically too acidic, you'll run into osteoporosis type of issues from draining too much calcium from your bones. <clears throat> but no one understands this pH stuff because they've all hammered in your head. You need to alkalize yourself to live. Alkalize to live. On a pH scale of 1 to 14, 7 is neutral, 1 to 7 is acidic, 7 to 14 is alkaline, your body is 7.4. When you drift more in that alkaline range, People doing too much citrus, eating too much vegetables, or drinking alkaline water are going to push themselves out in that direction. You're going to deal with more allergies, hives, bacteria, viruses, fungus, yeast, mold. Dr. Gonzalez in New York, our alternative cancer doctor, will say some cancers are in that zone. Keep pushing yourself that way. Things that bring you back that way, apple cider, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, the pill form of that, the calamel. Dr. Royal Lee of Standard Process understood this. That was folk medicine by Dr. Jarvis. Talked all about apple cider vinegar in there. He understood that. Dr. Royal Lee of Standard Process understood that and came with, up with the pill form of that, Calamo. I'm going to leave it at that. And everyone's got dead digestion. No one's, everyone's stomach today is absolutely crapped up. And you're going to tell them to alkalize yourself People need more acid in their stomach to break down their foods. Proteins are putrefying. Carbohydrates are fermenting in their stomach. Those acids are coming up, giving you the acid reflux, and your doctor is trying to sell you on this. You have too much acid in your stomach. Take Nexium, take Prilosec, take Protonix. That turns off your stomach there. Now you're not digesting your proteins, and you're not picking up your minerals. Take that long enough push your hair analysis minerals in a direction so far away, you'll walk right in that Alzheimer's zone. We'll see that in patients' x-rays of long-term use of Prilosec. We'll see that on people's bone density. And yet they're going to say, you need to alkalize yourself. How can we know if we have a That's a good question there. We're going to go by symptoms. And great question. How do you know where your pH is at? You can measure if you want. But the only ones we really have measure them are the ones who deal with chronic urinary tract infections. We could fix a ton of urinary tract infections by having them go to uh, Better Health, getting some of those urine strips, checking their urine strips out there. They're a little too alkaline. We're going to use certain things to acidify that. We dissolve kidney stones by fixing people's pH like that. <clears throat> Very cool things. If you're chronically in the wrong pH with your urine, dealing with recurrent urinary tract infections, you're just giving that a good living environment. You won't ever get rid of that. You'll, you'll work that to cystic fiber, or not the, uh, uh, what is that I'm thinking of? The cr just chronic UTIs and you know, work it the way up to the kidneys there. That's a real problem there. It, de higher, it depends. Not necessarily. The saliva should always be pretty neutral there. <clears throat> all right, all this blood work that I'm going to go over here is based off the work of Dr. Harry Eidner. This is a guy who we send all our blood work to if we need a second hand. He's, this is the one who teaches all the doctors all this stuff. The guidelines and patterns described here are a result of information gathered between 1980 and the present over 10,000 people using was known as the biochemical biopsy and all these other different methods here. <clears throat> this guy knows this stuff and we send all our tough cases to him. I'm going to go over all the simple stuff here for you. So I'm not going to go too much over your head. I want to talk about the first thing here, glucose. Everyone's becoming insulin resistant. It's because of high fructose corn syrup. Glucose, a.k.a. blood sugar, your optimum range is between 80 and 90 milliliters here. 
<clears throat> if you guys don't get this all written down, I'm gonna have this on an email that you can log in and just download this PowerPoint at the end. I'll give you that email there, so don't worry about trying to get all this down here. Panic rage is below 50, severe hypoglycemics, and above 300. It's increase in diabetes, metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, insulin resistant individuals, and decrease in hypoglycemia. If this is 300 and above, you're gonna wanna run that hemoglobin A1C. That's the marker for diabetes here. If that's running high, you're gonna have some diabetic issues there. <clears throat> People, I, just before I left today, I had a little girl, her glucose was one, about 110. She was only like 12 years old. I'm like, how much of a sweet tooth do you have? She's like, oh, I pretty much live on sugar. Exactly. Protein shakes, chromium. Chromium helps your cells utilize glucose better in your body. That's our, the closest you'll get the metformin there. Help it desensitize your cells and opening them up to picking up that glucose there. <clears throat> Gynema, if you need to, for sugar cravings. Chromium, protein shakes, Gynema. We do nothing more than those three things there. <laughs> We do two different forms of chromium too. Chromium picolinate and Cataplex GTF. I could get away with just doing the protein shakes. Case study, 61 year old male, diagnosed with diabetes here, cholesterol is 281, triglycerides 939, HDL there, ratio is 9.4. His the key thing here is his glucose was in the 200s to 250s. I had him doing one to two protein shakes a day, three pancreatropin. That is a pure glandular state to rebuild that pancreas gland right there. Gluco balances our biotics product there to maintain the sugar levels there. Cataplex GTF and chromium. These are both chromium products right there. One standard process, one's biotics. Came back in, what was that? Let's see, a month or so later. Ah, I was hoping I wouldn't do that. His sugar dropped down to 115 into the 160s. 115 in between 115 and 160s. This is the last, last lecture that I'm using this laptop. And it's uh, click what? Yeah, it froze up here. Microsoft. I'll be there in a few weeks here. I'm uh, getting married. Thanks. I was going to say that announcement to the end there. I'll be out of the office May 19th to June 2nd. If you hear of honeymooners getting lost in Tahiti, don't worry. That's all right. <laughs> Good. The next slide there, I'll talk about it. Zorox. If you guys haven't gotten into protein sh shakes, those Zorox protein shakes are really good. They're 90% whey protein and 10% egg whites. We just got a new flavor in the vanilla flavor. Zorex. Silk's got a really good coconut milk. You can get at Myers there. Uh, the vanilla brand's really good. And they're really good. And they're only like 7 grams of sugar. So it's nothing outrageous. Some of the some of the uh yeah some of the uh almond milks and rice milk a cup of those are like 20 grams of sugar so that coconut milk is actually a little bit better when it comes to that yeah it's actually not too bad yeah there's a there's even coming out with like some of um ice creams like that too That's the Zorex right there that I'm talking about. 
if you're more of a chocolate fan there, unfortunately the latest batch of chocolate ones, the patients say that it's not tasting as good. They manufactured them a little differently and it made the chocolate taste a little different. So they're redoing it to the old way that the patients used to like it. It actually tastes like Hershey mix and it's only got two grams of sugar. When you have something that tasty and it tastes like you're getting sugar in you, it really does help curb the sugar craving there. Yeah, they're, we're stuck with the stuff we got right now, but yeah. I've heard from patients just saying, yeah, that it's just not the good stuff that they've liked here. Is there Zorex what you would use on that diet with that 500? Uh, you can, but normally you're eating just a handful of food, and what's nice is for that HCG stuff, you're spending 50 bucks for that the liquid stuff in the book and you're not blowing a lot of money on buying a whole bunch of foods for that there. So you actually save quite a bit there, but I, I think you can still do the shakes with that. Total cholesterol, optimum range is between 150 and 220 there. Panic range is above 300 and above there. Increase in coronary artery disease, diabetes, thyroid hypofunction, anterior, anterior pituitary hypofunction, and adrenal dysfunction decreased in thyroid hyperfunction, hyper, hyperparathyroidism, viral hepatitis, and some uh, vegetarians. You need to check these other things. If cholesterol is running high on you, you need to rule out these other things to make sure this is, there's not an underlying issue there before them trying to sell you Lipitor, Crestor, Tricorn, and all this other junk here. <clears throat> because thyroid issues obviously is an issue in Michigan with a lot of individuals and uh, adrenal dysfunction. I got some pretty interesting cases here, even myself later on here. So you're saying that if your thyroid is not working properly, it's going to affect your cholesterol. cholesterol. Absolutely. Okay. I see a lot of hypothyroid issues, their cholesterol runs higher, and as soon as they get their thyroid in check, their cholesterol comes down. You absolutely need to check those things before they start hammering you with, hey, you need to be on statins. This is from the British Medical Journal. To hear Big Pharma tell us that these drugs are the miracle of medicines that have prevented millions of heart attacks and strokes, but a recent study published by the British Medical Journal tells a completely different story. For every heart attack prevented by the drug, two or more people suffered liver damage, kidney failure, cataracts, or extreme muscle weakness as a result of taking the drug. This sucks the CoQ10 out of your heart. This sucks the fat out of your brain's half fat, half cholesterol. You need fat in your body. They overplay statins in America here. It's criminal the way they're able to advertise on TV with this kind of stuff. Side effects of statins. This is just a small list I put on here for you guys. CNS, toxicity, hemorrhage, stroke, edema, bone pain, arthritis, chest pain, memory loss, UTIs, muscle pain, bronchitis, dizziness, insomnia, nausea, sexual, sexual dysfunction. That's because all your hormones are cholesterol based. Take enough statins, you won't have building blocks for your hormones there. This is important, this ad's everywhere. You guys just need to break down some simple things. You can explain this to some of your relatives here. Lipitor reduces <clears throat> the risk of heart attack 36%. Really, gosh, everyone, and they're trying to get kids on this stuff right now. Take that little star right there. Let's go down here, I'll go to the next one. That means in a large clinical study, 3% of the patients taking a sugar pill or placebo had a heart attack compared to 2% of the patients. That's a 1% absolute risk reduction. Skewed statistics. <laughs> They're trying to peddle this on everyone here. Unbelievable. So, your cholesterol is high. What are they doing right now? We see patients coming in, oh, I'm on Leveza now. My doctor's prescribed Leveza. It's the only FDA approved fish oil. It's about a buck seventeen per pill, hundred and fifty dollars a month, and I've heard of patients paying two hundred bucks a month for this. Co pays maybe twenty, thirty bucks, but this is robbery. This is fish oil that they're selling to you. This is what's scary about my profession here. If they, the FDA wants to really run rampant through us and take some of our things that we get great results with and make them FDA approved and do kind of stuff like this. This is why our healthcare is going down a pill. Standard processed tuna oil, 20 bucks for 120 capsules. 
Krill oil is actually pretty good. I've read some research on that. Actually, people dealing with heart murmurs and palpitations, I heard that works pretty well with them too. What is it called? Krill oil, K-R-I-L-L. The French paradox, this is interesting. The French paradox is an observation that the French people suffer a relatively low incidence of coronary heart disease despite having a diet relatively rich in saturated fats. The term French paradox was coined by Dr. Renaud, a scientist from that area in the University of France here. <coughs> and my last name's French. <laughs> so <clears throat> interestingly, they correlated this to um, the resveratrol and the wine. And this was from 60 Minutes, 1991. They eat a ton more fat in their diet and there's less issues of heart attacks, stroke, and cancer. And yet, the whole thing in the United States is your cholesterol. Keep saying, keep putting that in your head. You're going to die because your cholesterol is too high. Yeah, keep pounding that in your head there. <clears throat> HDL, this is what everyone goes by. You know, this is the good cholesterol here. Optimum range is, you know, 55 and above there. Panic range is above 180 or below 35. We got a guy, he's in his 20s, and his is like at five. We've been struggling with trying to do some things with him. This is generally going to be increased in, uh, there's no really pathological issues with it being increased, but decreased in thyroid hyperfunction, diabetes, hypertension, dysinsulinemia. We got him doing some chromium, some magnesium. He's just stuck at that number. I got some other guys that are in their low 20s with it. It's just like some people just, that's just where they're at. That's their normal. We don't get, we don't work them up over that there. Your bad cholesterol, the ADL, the LDL there, optimum range right there. Panic range is when it's above that 150 or below 50. It's going to be increased in thyroid hyperfunction, diabetes, hypertension, and dysinsulinemia. Exercising and using the proper oils. HDL and LD have, LDL have inverse relationships. If you increase HDL, LDL decreases and vice versa. Exercise and using the proper oils and I'll go over some other stuff here. We preach so heavily on why cholesterol is so bad for us that we almost forget why is it good for us. It helps make the outer coating of the cells, it makes up the bile acids that work to digest foods in the intestine and it allows the body to make vitamin D and hormones. Vitamin D and hormones. A lot of research today, lack of vitamin D in people's diet high correlation of cancers, more and more literature is pouring out. Hormones like estrogen and testosterone, all cholesterol based. Without cholesterol, none of these functions would take place and without these functions, human beings wouldn't exist. This is from the Harvard Health. You just gotta switch something up here real quick. Give me a thumbs up when you're good. All right, <clears throat> this is from The Lancet here. These are the studies they don't put on the 7 o'clock news. Researchers here, uh, people in Honolulu, Honolulu here, they did a little study in, oh, let's see this one. The lower your cholesterol drop, the more things that people died from. There's a ton of different studies like this. This is just one. This is The Lancet. This is peer review literature. This isn't from news magazine, the choir, things like that. There's a little health blogs on the side. <clears throat> this is the British Medical Journal. Relative uh, relationship between the serum cholesterol concentrations and mortality was studied in prospectively over 11 years in um, 630 New, New Zealand people over here. <laughs> yeah, the study showed a significant increase in relationship between the serum cholesterol concentration and the overall mortality. Decreased cholesterol, increased death. <clears throat> You'll have more issues with heart attacks, stroke, and cancer when your cholesterol decreases under 130. Your total cholesterol, when it starts decreasing under 130, your immune system will become compromised. All those immune things are all cholesterol-based. 
triglycerides, <coughs> blood fat, optimum range below 150, panic range above 250. This will be increased when dis, with dysinsulinemia, metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, diabetes, alcoholism, <coughs> coronary artery disease, thyroid or adrenal hypofunction. You need to rule these types of things out before getting worked up about these numbers. It will be decreased in thyroid hyperfunction, vegetarian diets, and autoimmune conditions. What increases triglycerides? Alcoholics, sugarholics, carboholics, trans fats. Triglycerides are dietary intakes of sugars that break down in your body. That <clears throat> when sugar breaks down in your body, what you don't use, you store as triglycerides. When you talk about the trans fats, you're not talking about the oils, right? What? When you're talking about the trans fats, you're not classifying omega oils, mm -mm. are you? Not at all. Nope. Okay. Things you're cooking with there. So, this individual ran some blood work at the church in March. Total cholesterol was 307. Triglycerides were 726. Yeah, that's what I said, because that's me right here. <laughs> I, ran blood, I ran blood work. I'm like, you know, I'm doing this lecture for blood work. I might as well run some blood work. I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, crap, this is worse than most of my patients. I'm like, I got to do something. I can't be lecturing on this kind of stuff here with that blunt numbers looking like that. High cholesterol runs in my family. Back in 2005, my total cholesterol was 265 and my triglycerides were 180. <clears throat> Probably doesn't help going out to a Brazilian steakhouse the night before and eating either, but <clears throat> although, you know, that number still shouldn't be that high. So, in a one month time span, I did 10 Cataplex G, two Arctic Omega oils. I'm not a sugar person, I don't fit that triglyceride category. I'm more of a high protein, low carb person anyway, so I was scratching my head with that blood work there a little bit. But in one month time, this was like a week or two ago, my total cholesterol came down to 220. Triglycerides were 171, down from 726 in one month. Ratio is 3.0. Dr. Tent was impressed. I floored him with my results. <laughs> <clears throat> the stuff works. What's in Cataplex G? It's nothing but, it's a B vitamin. There's Cataplex B and Cataplex G. Cataplex G has lipotropic factors in it. It's got the anesthetol, it's got the choline and some other things to help metabolize some fat out of your blood. So a little niacin, but not enough to give you that flush effect. We don't play cholesterol super hard, and I'm not concerned because I know high cholesterol runs in my family. Uh, it's all on my dad's side. It's kind of funny because Dr. Tent eats like crap and he's got good cholesterol. I eat good and I got bad cholesterol. <laughs> makes no sense, does it? <clears throat> Coronary artery disease. <clears throat> the heart has its own circulation system here. These are the blood vessels, the coronary artery. When that gets blocked up, you can throw a block or lack of that blood flow. That's what the cor coronary artery disease is. I, it's kind of interesting. I had a patient. She came in last Friday. She's like, I'm like, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. She's like, I've been in, in and out of the hospital for the last two months. She's like, I had a heart attack, I think. I'm like, you think? What do you mean you think? She's like, well, I had all the symptoms, the chest pain, everything going down the arm, this and that. <clears throat> She's like, but they ran all these tests on me and they found nothing. $10,000 $10, worth of tests to tell you everything's normal, have a good day. Leaves the hospital and still has this chest pain. This is how cool this muscle testing stuff is that we get in carotid artery reflux, carotid artery reflux. These are all on the chart through here. Heart reflux, low blood sugar, atlas, atlas, or angina reflux. I go, all right, the reflux I don't want to see active is this carotid artery reflux. This is the Anyone who had a stroke or an active stroke, that reflux is very active on them. That was strong. I'm like, good. Let's go to the heart. The heart attack, you know, that heart reflux would be weak. Good. Atlas, atlas is fine. Blood sugar is fine. Right to the angina reflux. Whoosh, weak. I'm like, you got lucky. I'm like, it's no wonder why I didn't find anything because you didn't have a heart attack. 
It's a coronary artery constriction that you had that spasm that left side, giving that pressure like someone's sitting on your chest there. When you're stressed or really mad at someone, that artery constricts, and that's that type of chest pain you get there. That's why they give you the nitroglycerin in the, at the hospital to dilate the artery and help oxygenate that heart. I'm like, you got lucky. You had her pop the Cataplex E2 pills and the Cataplex G to help open up those arteries before she left. She already knew a difference. Those two things. I'm like, you're very lucky. <clears throat> if I was that concerned, I would have had her, and I'll get into the four factors I would have her run, the homocysteine, the lipoprotein A, C-reactive protein, and fibrinogen. I'll get into that in a second. If I was really concerned she ran or if she was going to have an issue with that, I would have had her run those factors. Because I had a patient two weeks before uh, <clears throat> come in with her head. She had this massive headache going on. <clears throat> I adjusted her the day before, her atlas on her right hand side. She fought me enough to where I was like, all right, I didn't get the way I want it, so if you're still having this headache, come in tomorrow, I'll double check that. And again, she comes back and she's like, I got this massive like electric shock type of headache going on right here. I was like, all right, <clears throat> well, you were fighting me on that atlas adjustment, so let me just double check that atlas, make sure your arms are strong. One arm strong, I was expecting this arm to be weak. If that atlas was still out where I thought I didn't get it, that arm would have still been weak. That arm was strong. I'm like, all right, something's not right here. That arm's strong, that arm's strong. Check the atlas, the atlas is fine, atlas is fine. I'm like, all right, what's going on here? Let's go to the virus reflex. Viral meningitis will give you headaches like that. All right, note that's strong. Blood sugar's fine. <clears throat> Carotid artery, strong. Carotid artery, weak. It's like, ugh, you gotta be kidding me. Grab my nutritional stuff, check for the virus. Arm weak, all right, that's not it. Grab my stuff for blood clots, put it right to the head. Arm strong. I'm like, is there heart attacks and strokes that run in the family? No, my second question. Are you doing hormone replacement therapy? She's like, yes, I've been doing that ever since I had a hysterectomy 10, 15 years ago. I'm like, I highly suspect that you threw a clot in your head from this estrogen therapy because your arms are strong, your atlas is fine, you're not checking for viral things, that stroke reflex is very active. I had to put on some enzymes and things to dissolve this stuff out of her. Very scary, kind of baffled me, because that same day I had another girl that came in, she had a kidney stone. She's quinced down in another room with a kidney stone thing going on. So it's just like, things happen on Fridays when you want to get out of the office. <laughs> This is how you read cholesterol numbers. Everyone pay attention to this one here. Total cholesterol, this is your ratio. We pay attention to the ratio here. Total cholesterol divided by your HDL. You wanna see that ratio 5.0 and under. So let's take two examples. This guy's got cholesterol of 190, HDL 30. When you divide those two out, the ratio comes to 6.3. That's above that 5.0, that's bad. That's, this person's at a higher risk of heart issues versus a person that has cholesterol of 280 over here and his HDL's 85, that ratio comes out to 3.2. We're more concerned about that ratio than we are about saying, your cholesterol is above 200, you should probably be on some Lipitor or something, you know? <clears throat> We're concerned about that ratio. That's how you read blood work. Slow burn workout here, I've talked about this in the past here. Heavy muscular, in a nutshell, working out your muscles is the only way to drive sugar into your muscles without the use of insulin. People that do this type of a workout here have better results with lowering their blood sugar level there. Slow burn workout there. Dr. Bruce West of Health Alert promotes that heavily and it's good stuff. Increase your HDL and lower your LDL your C-reactive protein, your triglycerides, force the sugar into your muscles. We've got some other things here too. Phase one and phase two dieting. People that have a hard time lowering their cholesterol numbers and their sugar levels need to hop on a phase one, phase two diet. This is a lot of heavy fruits and vegetables, 
opening up that liver pathway. You store a lot of glycogen in your liver. <clears throat> so glucose, you can store more glucose in your liver as glycogen, and you'll essentially lower your numbers there. Your liver manufactures cholesterol. <clears throat> so people that have been doing this have been dropping their sugar levels and their cholesterol numbers pretty fast too. So I've been pretty impressed that you could get that at the office there. Phase one, phase two dieting. Whether when either or both of these pathways are not functioning properly, toxins pass through the liver unaffected and move into your bloodstream, circulating where they are deposited in various tissues of the body that can lead to symptoms such as digest digestive tract disturbances, toxic issues, hormonal changes, low energy, mood changes, and high cholesterol. Simple phase one, phase two dieting, and you'll lose some weight with it too. This is what we have people that want to transition to something when they come off the HCG diet doing right here. It's very complimentary to that. The Framingham study, I'm just going to talk about this briefly. Everything that we know about heart issues today is from Framingham study. It's a very popular study done in the town of Massachusetts that they've studied generations of people over time. And some key bulletins that they've uh, come up here with, you know, Faculty and your doctor said, oh, it's all right to have some cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes. I've got nothing to do with your heart and arteries. Like, no, wrong. <clears throat> Talking about the high blood pressure, the cholesterol levels. These are just some of the little bulletins. You can kind of Google that and get a little bit more on there. Also, too, low testosterone is issues in guys with cardiac issues here, too. Estrogen levels, too, in some women. So if you're that concerned, about your blood pressure, your cholesterol, heart attacks and strokes on the family. My grandma died of a stroke at 69, and I highly suspect a medication she was on that was pulled off the market by the FDA pushed her in that realm. Because I had my dad run these four factors right here, and they all came back clean. Lipoprotein A, homocysteine, C-reactive protein, fibrinogen. This is what I would have Bob Probert run. He died at age 45. His dad was 41 when he died. Billy Mays died at age 50. He was scheduled for heart or hip surgery the next day. Something completely. This is the stuff that flies under the radar right here that they don't catch. Lipoprotein A, the risk factor for coronary heart disease, cerebral vascular disease, atherosclerosis, thrombosis, and stroke concentrations may affect are affected by disease states but are only slightly affected by diet, exercise, and other environmental factors. You can't exercise or diet this factor out of you. <clears throat> this is why they don't run this. There's no drugs or medications to do anything with this here with. We use certain enzymes to digest inflammation out of people's arteries. I've got nurses from the cath lab the cardiologist is all over the butt because their blood pressure is 140 or something. They're wanting to put them on stuff and they're scared about heart attacks and stroke. And I'll go right around their cardiologist's back, have them run those factors. And I got a nurse, she's got a high lipoprotein. Yeah, I'm like, your cardiologist would have never found that. Never found that. Is there a case where we use bromelain CLA? That's one of the, that's our, one of our main things with a few of these factors here. It's a biotics product. Homocysteine, this is important. Homocysteine is an amino acid that is produced by the body usually as a byproduct of consuming meat. Amino acids are naturally made, naturally made products which are building blocks, proteins in the body there. <clears throat> Elevated homocysteine levels will increase your rate of heart attacks, strokes, blood clots, and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's because it plaques the arteries in your brain what do you need to get homocysteine the levels down? Folic acid, B12, and B, uh, B6 and B12 all lowers homocysteine, trimethylglycine. These are simple things. And on this scale here, <clears throat> most of the scales, they say 1 to 15 is normal. We don't like to see homocysteine above 10. I've seen people throw clots on 12s. We like to see that 10 and under. Like I said, this is simple stuff. They don't check for as often as they should. C-reactive protein, laboratory evidence and findings from clin uh, clinical population studies suggest that inflammation is important in atherosclerosis. That's buildup of plaque on the arteries there. <clears throat> this is the process of which fatty deposits build up in the inner lining of the arteries. 
All you need to know about C-reactive protein is the two I's, infection and inflammation. Infection and inflammation. If that's high, it's going to be high because of infection or inflammation. They do run this one a little bit more often than the other three. What do they do for it? You should take an aspirin a day. You have an aspirin deficiency. <clears throat> this is the American Heart Association here. Fibrinogen, when you cut yourself and you form a clot, it's the fibrin in your blood that helps you form that clot. <clears throat> this Eurostroke <coughs> study here found out that high levels of fibrin are highly correlated to stroke, and they don't know if it's fatal or non-fatal stroke, but fibrin levels that are too high make people clot a little bit more. Got to watch out for that. This is interesting. This goes to the full moon thing here, eosinophils. Eosinophils. <clears throat> Optimum ranges are here. Just follow pretty much the laboratory values that they have here. This will be increased in parasites, food or environmental allergies, asthma or emphysema. This next photo I'm going to show you is from a buddy down in college when I was doing this stuff in college. This is a tapeworm I cleared out of my buddy. <clears throat> Tapeworms come mainly from pork, but <clears throat> he was a sushi eater, and this is why I kind of got off that sushi train real quick. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm good on that stuff, man. I'm going to eat something that's more cooked. Crabby, irritable fatigue, itching in the butt, full moons, I believe it's the 17th. These things are more prevalent around the full moon. This is the stomach ache that makes no sense. The teachers can spot this in a classroom of people because these kids stand out. By no means do I want you to take pictures of what comes out in a toilet. I'll give you Dr. Tense email for that. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's go to PSA here real quickly. The PSA, the range is 0 to 4.0 here. That's going to be increased with benign uh, prostate hypertrophy, prostate cancers, and infections. You need to <clears throat> check all three of those there. A lot of people get worked up over this here. What's going to drive those PSAs up? All those xenoestrogens, all those pesticides. Get some of those bodies. It's going to attack that prostate. I've lowered some simple PSAs doing nothing more than nitro greens and cruciferous complete. As simple as that. This guy was a little trickier. 78 year old male, Dr. Jeff, on July 7th, you advised me to increase my quercetin plus here to four per day, and my PSA checked in six weeks. I am faxing you my report. Here's my progress of my PSA. What do you rec recommend at this time? This is strong stuff. This is from Mexico. You know we're really struggling, struggling with you if we can't adjust your PSA with that product there. This is back from 09 to 2010. He kept climbing, 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 7, 8, 6, 7, and back to 7 there. I looked at everything he was doing. I switched him from the standard process, Palmetto Plex, over to the Biotics Research, Palmetto Plus Forte. His new blood work, his PSA was 0 0.21, down from 7.32. One switch, that was it. That seemed to be his pill right there. That pill for his prostate, nitroglean, greens, cruciferous complete to keep the uh, estrogen out of him and uh, quercetin plus there just to keep things happy there from one pill. Cool results there. Some of these guys we struggle a little bit with, but hang in there enough, we'll find what you need. Ah, uh, it's pretty much, it's just their version of it. They might have a few extra things in it. But it's a lot of the similar things there, but um, just a different form. Now, let's say if you got, <clears throat> you, that you do have prostate cancer, they do something what they call a Gleason score. They take that prostate, do a biopsy of it, and uh, the scoring scale tells you how, pretty much how, how screwed you are. <clears throat> If it's four or less, you're good, meaning that how, if it's metastasized and it's all over your body. I got a cool story to go with this here in a second. You don't want to be in this range, eight to 10. This means that 
the progress of this cancer has metastasized everywhere and you're done. You're done, absolutely done. <clears throat> Go home, you're good, you're done, it's everywhere, we're not going to do too much for you. Dr. Michael Dobbins of Standard Process, he lectures for Standard Process, he's a chiropractor out in uh, San Francisco, California, he told us a very cool story at a lecture just about a month ago. He had some prostate issues, his were up about <clears throat> 7 point something to 10, he had a biopsy done, it was cancer, they did this Gleason score. <laughs> It was 9.5. His doctor's like, you shouldn't even be alive. <clears throat> He's like, this should be systematically all through over your body. Dr. Dobbins has been trying to lose weight over the last 10 years. He was 300 plus pounds. He said, there's a reason I'm still alive. I take all this standard process stuff. It's doing something. And I don't eat any more than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day. Sugar feeds cancer. He starved that cancer. It did not move anywhere. If the Gleason score that high, it should have been systematic. Kind of cool. Had a very interesting story to tell us there. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone here. Range should be 0 0.4 to 4.5. Panic range is when it's below 0.3 or above 20 there. <clears throat> when it falls below 0 0.4 and below, that's a primary hyperthyroid. There's people with the eyes wide open, they're skinny, their heart's going through the roof there, that's a hyperthyroid. When it's increased 4.5 and above, that's a hypothyroid issue here. Thyroids control a lot of things in your body, including your metabolism. 50 year old, 54 year old female here diagnosed with hypothyroidism, weight gain, the issues there. TSH was 9.35, duration was 18 years, Medications, armor since that date right there. All I did was some Cataplex F pearls and two Iodorols. I'm like, you're on armor. I'm like, I'm not gonna mess around with that there. What's very cool about the things we do at the office, I could work in place of your medications or I could work around your medications. In this case right here, I worked around her medications. When her doctor's like, well, you should probably increase your armor there since it's that high. And Let's try to tweak your thyroid some more. Follow up her, follow up here, just doing those two things. Her TSH dropped from 9.35 down to 0.16. There's a scale right here. I saw the endocrinologist last Wednesday for, the, for all the years I have been trying to get satisfactory results in my improving my numbers. This is quite amazing to me. My doctor thinks I'm taking too much armor, but doesn't realize that I never increased the dose that she recommended me to take. <laughs> Mind if I? That's her right there. <clears throat> yes. Cataplex F just deals with that calcium metabolism and helps deliver calcium into those tissues there. And the thyroid kind of deals with that there too. Uh, it's just a little complimentary thing. And it's got some iodine in that. All right. The cataplex F, I don't know if I, there's pearls and the, uh, tablets. The tablets have the iodine, the pearls don't have the iodine there. But it's just a little different, just, just a different angle. Uh, the Calmel Plus is just pure calcium where the Cataplex F pearls, I'm using the calcium that's already in the blood and just helping deliver that into the tissues. The tissues that are starving for the calcium, I use the oils to push the calcium into the uh, tissues there, so it's, it's a little different on that level there. Yes? Will she get off the armor? You know, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with armor. Armor is glandular pig thyroid. and We test medications to people all the time. That one checks fine. It's going to be your Synthroid, your level Thyroxin, and all those other things that uh, wreak havoc on you. But I told her, hey, I tell patients all the time, if they ain't working for you, I've got something that's complementary in place of um, the synthroid, the armor, and the level thorax in that. They thought they couldn't get armor thyroid anymore. They say that. That's a lie. You could get it. I got some websites. You go on some Canadian sites too if you need that.
GTA Forte. That's what we use in place of that. Both her kids have thyroid issues also, and they're pushing them to endocrinologists saying, you need to get on medications, you need to get on medications. So her case, I worked around her medications. Her children, I'm using what I would use in place of armor and Synthroid. Simple things that go a long way. Red blood cells, this will be increased in polycythemia, asthma, emphysema, and dehydration. Go up in the mountains in Colorado for a few weeks, lack of oxygen, your body's going to start producing more red blood cells here. This will be decreased in iron anemia, B12 deficiencies, folic acid, and those type of anemias. I could walk in this entire crowd, look at everyone's fingernails, those ones that look the whitest, like someone's pressing on them, have subclinical anemia there. Cold hands, white nails. That's some simple stuff there in the winter. <clears throat> white blood cells. This is, keep this simple and easy. If they're increased on your blood work, it's an acute infection. If they're decreased, it's a chronic infection. <clears throat> I'd rather deal with that than this. Acute infections, you know, that, you, that might just be a fluke. You're getting over a cold, it's been up. Something down here, this is some bacterial or viral, something chronic you might be dealing with that's driving your immune system down. Everyone's prone to certain infections here. You just need to know which one are yours. I'm more bacterial in nature. Some people are more viral. Some are both. Just need to learn to know your immune system. Platelets, these are the things that build up in your blood here. You know, also help form clots there if you cut yourself. Optimum ranges are right in through here. This will be increased in atherosclerosis, several types of cancers, inflammatory arthritis, anemia, pregnancy, and polycythemia. If it's increased in polycythemia, your blood counts are building up too much. We have some patients where, actually it's a hemochromatosis, too much iron, I'll get into that in a second here, but and this will be decreased in several types of cancers, also anemia, liver dysfunction, and medications. We have some patients that they're increased so high and we just have them do simple grounding and bring those levels back down to normal. Sesame seed oil works to increase um, platelets there. Some simple stuff there. Platelets, the, the sesame seed oil and chlorophyll together is what we normally use to increase those platelets. But they're increased, we're gonna see if grounding has any effect. But you gotta watch out, there's some cancers that will drive those through the roof there and you need to check those certain things there too. Earthing or grounding. Connecting the human body to the earth via direct and skin contact is based on preliminary scientific evidence demonstrating that standing barefoot on the earth has a wide variety of beneficial effects on the human body. Improved energy, improved sleep, stress, enhanced recovery, relief of muscle tension, and getting back in the rhythm. Your body is a human antenna. You're sucking all this stuff in. I'm wired today, I got this thing going here, I got this guy here. <laughs> Q-Link, this is what helps that electromagnetic static in the fog. Protect. I've used that ever since I worked in the hospital. I noticed the difference the first week using that. You won't have that afternoon fatigue. It's a different type of energy that you'll have instead of that fatigue from being around on computers all day. You work in front of a computer 12 hours, you'll definitely feel effective wearing a Q-Link that first week. That's a way of discharging electricity of your body. Yeah. And, and it felt kind of weird after I got done with that. And they've been wanting me to come back and do it again. I, I have second thoughts. I'd probably have second thoughts too. I'll talk to you on the side about that there. Right. Iron, <clears throat> that goes, this goes, you know, too much iron in the body here. That's that hemochromatosis. There's certain individuals that produce too much iron in their body and they have to, you know, every so often donate blood because they just have too much iron in their body. Michigan is one of the states that has a lot of iron in their wa in certain tap waters. Some people have to watch, you know, cooking with iron skillets and you know drinking certain waters, not building up too much iron there. But this will be decreasing iron deficiency, anemias, 
intestinal inflammation, ulcerations, bleeding, things of that nature there. Like I said, that's going to be looking at those nails type of thing there. Iron and red blood cells kind of go together there. BUN and creatinine, these are kidney markers here. I'm going to kind of blaze through this. <clears throat> this will be increase in chronic real, renal dysfunction, infection, renal hypertension, hypochlorhydria, diuretics, dehydration. This, these markers are all specifically for the kidneys here. Increase in chronic renal dysfunction, renal hypertension, and all that, decrease in low body mass. These let you know how they're functioning if things are aggravating your kidneys. What's going to aggravate your kidneys? How about our chronic Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil people? And people that live on that like it's a multivitamin will irritate the heck out of their kidneys here and push them into renal failure. I could take someone's blood pressure at work and people who are running high on that bottom number, you know, that bottom number should be about 80. If you're running, you know, 100 and higher, I've had patients running as high as 130 on that bottom number. That's a renal, that's your diastolic renal number right there. That's a kidney irritation. We gotta do some kidney building things and stop that train of ibuprofen Motrin. Urologists will tell patients all the time, these things destroy your kidneys. You don't wanna live on this type of stuff. Do some of those numbers change with age? Uh, the, some, yes. Not, the, not as far as that diastolic going up that high, but blood pressure will increase with age. Sodium. This will be increase in chronic renal dysfunction, dehydration, water softeners, decrease in adrenal cortical hypofunction, increase triglycerides. <clears throat> this is a lot of this stuff's going to be dehydration. If it's decreased, use the Celtic sea salt. I'll talk a little bit more about dehydration. A lot of doctors don't even pay attention to the certain dehydration issues on blood work here. What's dehydration going to look on blood chemistries? Check the electrolytes, your sodium, potassium, bicarbonate levels, urine specific gravity, high specific gravity indicates significant dehydration. BUN, your kidney markers may be affected there. This is interesting here because we have an individual that works with us sitting in the back of the room. Her red blood cells in her RDW were increased the last few years and we're, she's trying to figure out what's going on. Is this an infection type of issue? This is a simple dehydration issue. She's like, I drink water all the time. Water doesn't hydrate you. You need either salt or sugar to kind of bind with water to hydrate the cell. <clears throat> One, one, and one. One gallon of water, one teaspoon of Celtic sea salt, and one teaspoon of sugar. When you go in a hospital with severe dehydration, what do they put you on? They put you on an IV bag, and that IV bag is 0.9% sodium chloride and dextrose, salt and sugar. And it's not called water retention, it's called hydration. I could pinpoint all the people that don't have salt in their diet because they sweat profusely doing barely anything. And you, they're gonna, I tell patients all the time, they're going to kill a lot of people this summer because they're going to put them on a beta blocker to slow down their heart. They're going to put them on a water pill, a LASIK, to pee out their minerals and their B vitamins. And they're going to tell them to do a no salt diet. And they're going to put someone out in the summer heat that person will drop down faster than you will ever know it. Ask anyone on a water pill and a beta blocker, or even just a water pill. You hate the heat, don't you? Oh, I can't stand it. I'll never retire in Florida. Not on this pill. <clears throat> they will not. It's good salt, Celtic sea salt, is the air condition to your body with the heat. When you don't have salt, water leaves your cells and you perspire it out. Watch a sporting event, watch a marathon. The people sweating like dogs, going for the water bottle like crazy. They can't hold their water and they're losing it so fast before they could even retain it that they don't stay hydrated and they burn out the fastest and fall to the bottom of the pack real quick. It's as simple as that. When you're talking about this gallon of water with the sugar and Yes. You're talking sure. one every day? 
Yeah, absolutely. No, you don't have to drink that whole gallon. Keep hydration simple. Don't make a math formula out of it. Just drink to your urine slightly. Drink to your urine slightly clear or slightly yellow to clear. <clears throat> you don't need to make a math formula out of it. What were you going to say, Sharon? Why did you have to drink the If someone's sweating profusely and they don't hold salt and they don't want to use you know, Celtic sea salt and rather take a pill form of that, Cal Ammo is the pill form of that. That's what I would have my athletes on, football players, during August in a summer heat while they're training. All these guys who drop over a heart attack issues and cardiac arrest in the summer, coming back and going into summer camps, they don't have enough salt in their diet and they're losing everything faster than they could hold it. Ah, uh, that Himalayan salt, that pink one, is that, you, yeah, yeah, that's good, you know, I've heard good things with it, we just prefer the Celtic sea salt there. This is your daily protocol here, your cattling, your multivitamins, multivitamins, PDCM, pick some type of oils, I tell you what, I love playing my oils during the summer, I'm going to do two tuna oil, two linum B6, and then the days I'm out in the sun, I'm going to put those on the shelf. I'm going to do those six Cataplex F pearls and use that coconut oil, coconut, coconut oil, and I'm going to get out in the sun and bronze up faster than anything. You play your oils right, you'll feel it in your skin. Your oils feed your brain, hair, nails, skin. It's absolutely amazing here. Extra virgin. Life, you know, we got one at the office here. The Garden of Life has a good one there. You know, there's a lot of, you just want an extra virgin uh, coconut oil there. This thing's definitely getting trashed. This is pretty much coming towards the end. I just want to have you guys, all right, that's an Asira there. People uh, interested in that, go to Asira.com. Seasonal allergy people that works great with. A whole bunch of other different things. It's a nice little fine tuning technique that we do there. If you're interested in faxing your orders over, you could fax them over, or you could just go to diversehealthservices.com now and just order online. This is the end. And also, <clears throat> for those of you who like to get this uh, PowerPoint, I put it, I used to put my old lectures on email for patients to download. I'm leaving this one on an email account so you guys can log on to it and download this PowerPoint if you want this PowerPoint. Just go to Yahoo Mail, sign into the mail system. The username is DHS Chiropractic and the password is DHS777 and you could get tonight's PowerPoint and review it if I flew through some things that you want to take a look at again there. What? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, and there's some of my old previous lectures in there in the uh, one of the files. But if you go right to the inbox, you'll see that lecture there, labeled there. So if you want to get that, that's not a problem. Are there any questions? Good. To know. Yes. Fibrinogen? Thyroid. Thyroid. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and it it all depends. And also too, we're gonna we're gonna muscle test, and that's what really separates us from these other guys just running all these clinical tests. Because I tell all these patients all the time, you know. I've been to this doctor, I've been to that doctor, how come this guy couldn't fix me and you saw me one or two visits and I'm all fixed? And how come if you tell me I have a staph infection, how come that other guy didn't find out that I've got a staph infection? Well, I go, that's pretty simple. There's clinical problems and there's subclinical problems. Clinical stuff you're going to see on blood work. Subclinical things you're not going to see on blood work, but you're going to have those symptoms. That's where, when we get into muscle testing, that's what helps us separate us from everyone else and the results that we get at our office versus these guys just uh, running blood work and playing with thyroid numbers there.
That's an adrenal gland issue there. That's just how you are there. You know, your body's just holding on to it more than others. People who are, you know, really lacking that salt, we have patients in the office, they go from sitting to standing and they get that dizziness. That's an adrenal gland issue and a salt issue. We'll have them put that Celtic sea salt right in their hand, go right that to their mouth and go sit in the standing and a lot of that goes away. <clears throat> like just simple adrenal glands and salt. Well, Wendy's has sea salt now. You, we should all eat French fries here. <laughs> Good question. You're going to look. You're going to look at the color of the salt, and it's just like table salt. Table salt is white. It's bleached. It has some minerals in it. You want dirty gray salt that's got some minerals in it. I show a really cool clip at one of my old lectures. A little. Uh, PowerPoint slides is showing there's no cancer in the ocean. There's no cancer or degenerative diseases, heart disease and things in the ocean. It's all the minerals they get in the sea that replenish their bodies that we don't get here. And, you know, here an ocean fish to a lake fish where you get pesticides and all the lake runoffs are from runoffs into these lakes. Look at all the diseases these fishes have. The male bass in Michigan are all in the half female organ parts in them from all the pesticides that are running out in the lakes here. This estrogen thing is affecting everyone from all age ranges. All age ranges. There's more females being born than males because of this stuff. Guys my age, sperm counts are taking infertility is going through the roof. More prostate cancers, more breast cancer. We don't preach a future detox pathway open, at pathways open for no reason. You know, it's, it's important. One of the other statistics that they just brought out is that this Down syndrome problem that they have is now down 1% of the newborns from 1 out of 108 in the last two years. The kids don't have a chance today. The, the minerals aren't in the soil. It's not in the food. It's not in their diets. It's, you know, these vaccines. I'm going to do a pediatric lecture in the future. Talk about some interesting things there. But the rate of vaccine on our autism from 1990 was 1 in 10,000. Today it's 1 in 100. Everyone wanted to act like this is some type of medical mystery out there. Well, what happened from that? Now, well, the increased rate of vaccines, the increased doses of vaccines, all these things they're putting in your body. The doctor, you can YouTube Dr. Andrew Mold, watch his tolerance loss videos. He's saying these are causing mini strokes in the brains of kids. You can compare one side of their face to the other. You see an eye drooping, the eyes going that direction, a smile going here. These are, you can tell you definitely where you've stroked out in your brain from these certain shots. Like I said, you get sick through your nose and your mouth. Don't want things put in your blood system. Okay? Don't belong here. Who are some of the sickest patients we see in the office? Military people, Peace Corps workers, missionaries. What do all three of those have in common? They probably got whacked the hardest with vaccines. I had a girl last year, she was an from some good missionary work there. She tried to get out of all the vaccines, this and that. She had a yellow fever vaccine. She just had just that one. That one threw off her platelet count so far. She had this rash and stuff on her skin. She didn't know what the heck she ran into. We got a marathon runner that travels the entire world, everywhere. I'm like, how do you get all these vaccines? It's like, I haven't had one to get in any country. You don't need one to get in. They don't, they don't check for this stuff. It's like, there's no way for them to check for this stuff. <clears throat> you guys have a problem with that? I got connections on that side. <laughs> How do the, um, the kids from the mother and the parents from the mother kids in school requires vaccination for some of the schools? I mean, how do they get out of that? I'm going to address that at that pediatric lecture. We got all the girls at the office for the kids in school. 
there's we could get out of this stuff here. And the problem we're going to have more problems with the hospital workers getting out of swine flu, mumbo jumbo, and all those types of shots there. Hey, Jeff. There are waivers that can be signed so you don't have to have those vaccines. Yeah, waivers waivers right. for the school. Right. We're going to have problems more with the nurses. The nurses are having a hard time getting out of this stuff. They're trying to make them wear mad. Well, if you don't get your flu shot, you get that shot. See, they wear a mask. And what happened this last fall? They had this last dose of vaccines here for the flu shot. You had your regular flu strand in there. You had your H1N1 in there. Yeah, this is H2N3 strain. They have 10 in your mercury dose. It's like you get a double whammy there. Now they're trying to push this chicken pox stuff. Oh my gosh, whooping cough, California had five extra cases. There's a few more cases in Michigan. Your child needs a whooping cough vaccine. Google whooping cough. I tell these moms all the time. Google whooping cough. Whooping cough has a specific sound to it. 90% of these kids, 99% of these kids that come around and see when they got whooping cough, it's not whooping cough. What about the shingles shots? Shingles, great, excellent question. Shingles. Shingles is chicken pox virus. <clears throat> great question. I, I'm going to explain this greatly. When you get chicken pox, you deal with it, you still have that virus, that herpes zoster virus in your nerves. It hides in your nerves, the dorsal root ganglia in your nerves. It hides there because your body doesn't attack it. If your body attacked these nerves, that would be an autoimmune disease. But as you get older, things stress you out, your stress goes up, and your cortisol goes up, your immune system goes down, and your immune system taints that's when that virus comes out of that nerve and wreaks havoc on you. Then your immune system wakes up and you get these lesions on you. And then it goes, shh, hides right back down in that virus there, or right in that nerve there. So you got it, it's in your nerves. The shingles vaccine ain't going to do nothing except for more junk. Can you get a repeat of that uh, Zoster's virus? Yeah, absolutely. That's a virus. More People who are more prone to these viral activities, we're gonna say, you know, put some more L lysine in your diet. Stay away from the foods high in arginine, peanut butter, the chocolate, the nuts, the whole wheat bread, things like that. Those foods high in arginine will irritate viral people. Talk to someone who has herpes outbreaks. They're gonna, they'll tell you what to stay away from. That's just a different form of that virus. They stay away from all that stuff. When you burn through calcium, people hate cold sores. That's virus. That's your first sign that you burn through your calcium. <clears throat> calcium puts the breakdown of viruses. When you lose your calcium, that virus will come out, wreak havoc on you there. Calcium and l lysine takes that away. Simple things. It's, it's all about knowing your immune system. Your nervous system, everyone's nervous system here is wired completely different. Some people are high, strong, others are easy, steady, yeti. Your immune system is the same way. Some people are more prone to bacterial things, other people are more prone to viral things. Some, unfortunately, deal with cold. And we've had patients pounding so many antibiotics that control their immune system in the ground where they've acquired, whether it's fungal yeast or mono from that. It's all plain. Everything we see in our office is things that have just been completely mismanaged. It just depends how far mismanaged it is until it gets to us. Do you think some of the inoculations is causing ALS? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's a devastating disease. I know a, a woman that has it now, and uh, I guess it's progressed pretty quickly. But as, just tonight while we were talking, I remember, I think that she used to get um, herpes on her lip or something yeah. of that sort, so. It's a mess, man. I tell you what, working in a hospital for four years as a patient transport it was a complete awakening to me. You know, when you're young, you think, oh, I'm invincible. And all the time I ever get sick, they're going to have that blue pill that's just going to fix me. Just, technologies in pharmacies going through the roof, they're expanding. All you need is that just blue pill, and all the time I'm sick, it's going to fix everything. That's a big wake up call, but no, there's not going to be that miracle pill. I ran into a pharmacist, 
has a new patient a few weeks ago. She's like, I'm like, ah, oh, your pharmacist, huh? How do you like what you do? She's like, oh, you know, I changed, you know, I've even in a different direction in my career. She's like, I like what I do. I do long term pharmacy. I'm like, that's long term pharmacy. She's like, well, instead of, you know, working at CVS to deal with patients there, I work at a nursing home and I work more specific with patients. She's like, I'm one who has to juggle these patients with doctors because they're on very different pills and I gotta monitor that this pill doesn't affect that pill from that doctor and this and that because they don't check this stuff. Yeah. And they're on this pill to kind of affect the side effects from that pill from that doctor and that or there's like, like, like you like that. I'm like, that's great, you're a chosen one for that job. <laughs> And uh, Randy, in the medical profession, or are you outside the medical profession as chiropractors <laughs> collectively or individually? I tell patients they have two options: they can work with us or against us. And they're working against you right now, or are they starting to change? Donna's a great example. You know, I, you know, I said I can work with your doctor, or I can work against them. I could, you know, work around the medication they're using, or I could do something in place of that. I leave that up to the patient there. You know, that's, that's all up to them. You know, my mom's a nurse. She knows firsthand of all the mess, you know, working in oncology. And, you know, it's just it's an absolute mess. I've got a buddy that I can fix on the side. There are, my, I still hang out with my buddies I work with at the hospital. I showed an x-ray of, you know, one of my buddies. He had a chip on his vertebrae is a growth plate that never closed. He slipped his back out at work. They did an x-ray. They're trying to tell me he broke his back and all this stuff. He needs physical therapy. He might need surgery, this and that. Look at his x-ray. I'm like, that's a congenital anomaly. That's a growth plate that never closed. What are you talking about? They're like, it's not a broken back. One, two adjustments, L4, L5. He's walking straight. But for him to get his work in his town, he's got to do his PT and, you know, crawl his whole cycle. I'm like, Whoever was reading the extra that day in the ER, they just, they just had a special on the TV. They had this doctor, this is interesting. He's a, one of the surgeons was talking, like, you don't want to be in a hospital around June or July, because that's when all the new Russian interns come to the hospital. Like, you're absolutely right. The second thing he said is, like, if you're going to surgery, and your doctor makes you shake hand or introduces you to an intern on the side, it's a good chance that he's going to be working on you in there too, yeah. experimenting while you're out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you what, I've seen, yeah. I've done midnight shift too. That's an interesting shift at the hospital. You come to the ER drunk, breaking open your fist, needing stitches, you're going to get Joe Schmo practicing doing stitches on you that night. <laughs> I've got some fun stories there. 
Anything else? Yogurt's fine. It's going to be more, that's cheese and yogurt is more processed there. Uh, it's mainly the milk and ice cream. Some people, the cheese, the casein and the cheese will aggravate some people there, but the milk and ice cream, and especially the sore throat people, you know, it's, it's mucus forming. Mm -hmm. The mucus forming stuff just harvests that bacteria and makes it thrive and live there for longer. Sugar feeds everything. Uh, not necessarily, but you know, when you're sick, you'll notice you don't crave sugary things as much. Your body gets into your cravings. Your cravings tell you something. You have allergy people, they want to eat pickles like crazy. Oh, I'll go out of my way to eat pickles. It's because you're too alkaline. When your body's trying to tell you I want to eat more in this direction. People don't crave sugar and candy either. They have colds. Sugar decreases your immune system. Your cravings tell you things. You have kids in the office, hyphen issues, put everything in their mouth. They grab this and then and I just put it right to their mouth. Your baby's deficient on minerals. It's telling you he wants minerals that he's not getting in his diet. Simple things like that. What about the pickling processes that are done on food? Are
these are cancers. And the nerve conducts will throw you off. Alternative practice is the doctor is full of crap. It tells you to flush out the stomach. That's what we do it all day long. What do you feel about colonoscopies? You know, if we're struggling with guts, we're going to recommend it. If you're bleeding from your gut that we can't get under control, you got loose bowel movements that are chronically constipated, we're going to recommend it. But as far as a regular routine checkup, yearly, no, we don't recommend it. That after 50 thing doesn't apply? No, nah, not necessarily. Unless, unless you know, the colon cancer is in the family, and that's an issue, obviously, yeah, that might not be a bad thing to check here. But, Exactly what we talked about in the past. These anesthesiologists automatically write off on your insurance and you have a polyp or a so they get paid for putting you out. Plus, now you know, it's the number one cause of death in a hospital is infection. Hospital induced infections. The C. diff issue, this MRSA stuff. Infections aren't responding to medications the way they used to. And each and every year, they have stronger and stronger doses of antibiotics to kill off these infections. Better learn to play the new system right. Not overplay it the wrong things there. Anything else? If you guys have anything else, you can just kind of walk up here. <laughs>